Hello, everybody, and welcome to Nintendo Power Block, episode 179. I'm one of your hosts, Corey Derrigan, alongside me, as always, is that retro code, Eddie V. Power Block is in session, yes! Yeah, we are live on Mixer and Twitch. Uh, you can find us live at twitch.tv slash live and mixer.com slash live. Uh, we have the chat open. We'll be uh, interacting with the chat if you ever so kindly come join us on uh, tonight is Tuesday, uh, the, the 21st of January, 2020. Ed, how are you doing? How are you feeling today? How are you, how are you ready to podcast? I'm super ready to podcast. I have my monster drink in me, so I have energy. I got some recording done. Uh, I've been working on my uh, bunch of game awards list uh, for optional opinion, and uh, I'm struggling, dude. Um, not because there's a list of great games, but like I'm like I don't know how many indie games really stood out this year. Of course, every like the big players had a lot of great games come out, but I'm just like, man. Looking back for indie, 2019 wasn't as big as 2018. Um. In a sense, but there's great indie titles that came out, so I'm just getting my list, uh, and I'll be recording that real soon to have it out for Friday. But man, I I've been doing really good, and uh, man, this backlog challenge, I am definitely putting a lot of work in. Like I'm I'm really trying to get a lot of games down, but um, there's been some sales on some stuff that I haven't been picking things up and I like why 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 mm -hmm. um also uh one of my friends uh they got the bluetooth adapter that came out for switch that you could order mm -hmm. um and I just got some bluetooth headphones uh and I'm thinking of getting it so I could put it on my switch um and be able to hear it like that and stuff and a lot of people say it really works well so I can't wait to do that um Awesome. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, well, I've been working on the website because there's a lot of stuff to do. Uh, <laughs> that's been, that's pretty much been my entire weekend in my week so far <laughs> is just, uh, we're trying to, since we're, we're, we're bringing back a bunch of shows that we used to do and, uh, like we're kind of revamping them, but they're shows that we enjoy doing like, uh, you know, we've already announced it. If you've been paying attention, at least uh, Pot and Play, uh, Arsenal X, uh, Let's Plays, Indie Masterclass, which is a spin on our on our uh, indie showcase show that we used to be. So, like, mm -hmm. I've been transferring the content from our the channels that we used to, you know, do content for. Yes. And like, since it's since it's our content, like, I've been moving it to our current youtube channel for boss rush games and uh let me tell you man i all 40 episodes of pot and play are now on <laughs> our our our, our youtube channel so if you want to go over to youtube.com slash boss rush games you can check it all out under pot and play the pot and play playlist uh like I said, we have new episodes coming starting February 1st, so I wanted to get all those classic episodes up there so people could, you know, either catch up or watch interesting conversations or just see how we've evolved uh, technically. Uh, I, I will say technically because our conversations are always good, but the videos sometimes are pretty rough. Uh, yes. Also, sometimes it didn't record our audio, but you can watch fun gameplay like... Uh, you know, like in uh, God of War or or Cuphead. Yeah, <laughs> do you get do you get an idea of Metro <laughs> redo and hear both of our frustration at the same uh, time? Yeah, dude, it was <laughs> it was uh, that mm, that game. Interesting. I'm glad people enjoy it, but it is it's uh I'm just gonna throw it out there and say it's you know it's not for me. So it has a lot of questionable content. <laughs> mm. I haven't said that in a while. Trust me. It's true. You you have not said that in a while, and I'm proud of you. But uh, you're right. <laughs> uh, so that's been that's been my my week and my weekend so far. Uh, my goal 
is by this this weekend to have all of our content up there. Uh, there's only going to be about 50 episodes of Arsenal X, even though we recorded about 80, 87 episodes because of, uh, uh, like, there's some some copyright stuff on there. Uh, just, I, I don't know how, why or how, but it just, some of them have copyright protections on them and I won't be able to transfer them over, but I'll get the, I'll get, I'll get most of them over. And, uh, if we have to do some finagling, maybe we can do that, but that's, yes. like I said, that's been, that's been my week, uh, you know, that and, and, uh, yeah, really just making new thumbnails and some fun logos and stuff like that. It's been, it's been fun right? Like revisiting all these videos. Uh, but I would be glad when they are all done uh, and they are all posted in order on the website and, uh, on the YouTube channel, I put the original post date, uh, like when we originally posted the video, what network it was on and, uh, who the hosts were during that episode. So it was, a it was a lot of unnecessary work that I'm sure people don't, won't care about, but I do. So, uh, yeah, yes, and it's a good way to catalog our work over the years. Yeah, that's that's the thing is like when when we were doing Power Block for uh, DNA and then Nerds Gone Rogue, which by the way, the first twenty one episodes that aren't on any other feeds except for DNA are now mm-hmm. under the classic Nintendo Power Block uh, playlist on our YouTube page as well. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to put them up audio yet, audio-wise yet. Uh, I might, but uh, they will be backdated just to have them all in order. But, Ed, do you know when the first episode of Nintendo Power Block was? With you and Joey or with Yeah, with, me and, with me and Joey. I think it was 2016. You are correct. Let me scroll down here. Uh because first... you used to do a thing, you used to be like. Well, the reason Pow why was, the reason why we called it the Pow Block is because it started as a YouTube segment where people would write into our YouTube channel and ask questions, mm-hmm. and uh, I would answer them, or we would come up with a topic, and uh, you know I would talk about that topic. Uh, the very first episode of Nintendo Pow Block, and back then it was just called the Pow Block. Uh, was on March 30th of 2016. Wow. And then, you know, we did like five, about five or six episodes of that. And then uh, the Nintendo Power Block podcast, as you, well, kind of know it today, started on June 21st of 2016. And that featured me, Edward, and of course, Adrian, who is now making games at the Frozen Machine. So, uh, yes. Yeah, man, I I went back and watched uh, quite a few of these episodes, and uh, I remember like we took a little bit of a break uh, in November, and then came back in January, and the first episode we did was the top twenty five Wii U games, <laughs> <laughs> which that was fun. Which I actually want to talk to you about at some point. Uh, I I do like that, but I would like to uh, because I'm going on vacation towards the end of February. And we're mm-hmm. gonna need to record an episode, uh, like a just like a a random episode then. Yes. And uh, unless there's a unless there's a a Nintendo Direct that week, uh, we will record one uh, either early because I'm leaving that Thursday, or uh, you know maybe we'll just ha- do like a couple segments here and there. But I would like to since that week will be the uh, starting of the fourth year of Nintendo Switch, I would really yes. like to do like a Nintendo Switch anniversary episode where we talk about our top twenty-five Nintendo Switch games up to that point. Uh, I think that would be re- a really fun episode to do. Uh, yeah, I man, that the list is bonkers. Yeah, it's going to be bonkers because it's just like with just within four years. I think Switch has like a thousand games or something on it. Yeah. And ranching from indie third and first, regardless of ports and stuff, 
you could pinpoint on how many like amazing titles and defining titles for Switch. And so I and I think our list I think some people won't think our list is gonna be uh similar, but to tell you the truth, it's gonna be really different. I think our list is gonna be really different. I think our list is gonna be pretty different, except for mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I'm sure there'll be similar games, right? But, like, I'm pretty sure our list is going to be pretty different. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, just for the simple fact that, you know, you like a lot of different games that I don't care for, and I like a lot of different games that you don't, right? Like, I, I just think they're just going to be different. Uh, so, yes. I don't know, man, but just revisiting a lot of these old episodes and... <laughs> Dude, I used to do the dumbest thing opening the show. <laughs> like Joey was like those first couple episodes uh Joey was hosting. Like Yeah. He used to say, "Welcome to the Pow Block." And I'd always go, "Pow Block." And I like punch the screen. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. That was yeah. it did. You passed it on down to me. Yeah. <laughs> Where I say crazy things or uh, the way that I end. I think you being the uh, me playing, playing the, the straight one and you being the crazy one, I think works better (laughs) for this, the (laughs) type of show that we do. You know what I mean? So uh, me doing the crazy does not work. (laughs) Does not work. So, uh man but yeah just reminiscing about these old episodes it's been really fun and like it's it's cr- weird because like you know we do the show every week and we don't really have the time to like go back on old episodes or like you know really watch them you know or uh just kind of you know what i mean like we we just kind of go about it like we'll do the episode i i'll post it and then the next week we do another episode right but like this week has really given me a lot of chances to view our old content and just really kind of watch how we used to do things and how terrible of a host I was. <laughs> like, oh my gosh, dude, you think I'm bad now? Like, oh gosh, go watch that very first podcast episode. Man, I thought it was what cool. About the ev- it was what bad. about the episodes that I hosted when you took a break? Uh uh they were better than the ones that i hosted and we'll be quite honest with you uh (laughs) wait huh (laughs) i'm just i'm just a bad host man i like i like hosting the show because because i'm you know kind of a what do you call it uh greedy greedy i guess you would say i just want (laughs) to host it but you know i I try. I I try. I'm not gonna lie to you. You I do try. a fantastic job hosting Pop Block. The, the, the thing with Pop Block is just like I get to sit back and nerd out on Nintendo, and you get to drive the ship. And so, uh, but like it, it was just like it was really fun watching our friendship evolve through these episodes too. Yes, because you can definitely tell, like those first probably at least probably fifteen ish episodes, like. We were like even in that deep. We were still trying to feel each other out and feel out how we wanted the show to go. And like, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes we would do two episodes a week, and other times we wouldn't do any episodes for like two or three weeks. And like, it was very inconsistent and very like. And and a lot of that had to do, to me personally had to do with scheduling. Oh yeah, so because me, we like I was still working at the restaurant at the time, and like, you know, our at that point our schedules were the opposite of what they are now right like yeah. you would work you would work early in the morning at toys r us and i would be working like all day at the restaurant and yeah like then you know now it's the complete opposite almost but still we you know we still have some scheduling conflicts which is why we're recording on tuesday this week instead of thursday but let me tell you man it's i i'm so glad that we are still doing the show Yes, I am. We, we are like, we are literally twenty one weeks away from episode two hundred, right? Like, That's crazy. And like, it's gonna be. We're gonna have to do like a. We're gonna have to do something big for two hundred, right? I mean, I know we kind of mm-hmm. talked about it a little bit, where like, boss rush will hit fifty, and depending on when we start, Arsenal X that'll hit one hundred. 
around the same time. Like, yeah, all of our shows are going to hit major milestones around the same time. And it, I, we, I think we need to, I don't know what we're going to do, you know, like, I don't know what we want to do, but like, it's really exciting to see, like, I don't know. I got kind of like, I wasn't like crying or anything, but it was kind of emotional looking at like, this is this we're going into our fifth year of creating the show, right? Mm-hmm. Like our fifth year of making this show. And it's, it, I, I just, I, that's just so like really hard to believe sometimes, but it's still, it's still worth it. Like every week, you know, I mean, coming together and having this natural, having this natural talk about Nintendo and, and just having our natural talks in podcasts and, or any show, whether we doing power to play, uh, AX, um, even boss rush. Like now it's just like through all the years that we've been podcasting doing this, everything has just felt natural. Nothing to me has been felt feeling manufactured. Our, opinions and our viewpoints they vary to a degree that you know it's hard to choose who's right or wrong because you know it's various various opinions but it's always good to listen to our the way that we think and have our insight it's just spending that quality time together you know just having these discussions Mm -hmm. we recorded recording and not recording it's just like it's it's been that and i love the consistency that we have been able to do that so yeah it's, it's especially really late time. especially lately you know like yeah i mean like really like i mean we were pretty consistent for a while and then there was a bunch of stuff that was happening and i just like i felt really tired and just kind of like lacking in in my ability to just like be 100 percent in on the show but like and that was, I mean, that was part, part, mostly my fault for like trying to do too many things and everything, but like probably since October, I would say like, I feel like the show is like better than it's ever been since then. I really mm-hmm. do. Like I, like, and I listen, I listen to our show like every, every week just to make sure like audio levels sound okay. Or yeah. we all sound, you know, like we're to like really you know what I mean? Like audio levels are fine. Uh, sometimes they aren't, sometimes they change suddenly and I have to fix some things the next time we, we do it. But for the most part, like I just, I really like, I'm not annoyed listening to myself talk, which is always a good thing. Cause I usually am right. Like I, I, when I listen to our shows, I, sometimes I like, Oh boy, I need to learn how to talk better sometimes. But, uh, <laughs> you know, I just, I'm really proud of, the show, you know, like even, you know, we, we talked about it a lot. Like we used to say this when we were doing it for nerds gone rogue, like when, even if nerds gone rogue went away, like we would still do this show because we love it so much. And like, this, mm-hmm. it's still true. Like if, if boss rush games doesn't like, I mean, knock on wood, like I, I think it will be, I think we're on track to do something great, but like, you know, even if like, boss rush went away and standard death went away and arsenal x went away i think we would still do this show because we love it so much right like i yeah and that's just i don't know it's just been it's just been really fun this week to to watch old shows and kind of work on them and kind of clean them up a little bit before i repost them and it's been it's been fun so yeah uh well, I guess that's the uh, the opening segment. I was going to talk about how <laughs> E3 can change, but we can talk about that later after these news bits or, or whatever, you know, if we have time. Uh, of course, if you're watching live on, on Mixer and Twitch after the show, we will be playing. Uh, we will be recording an a episode of the Retro Game Show, uh, which is our retro YouTube show, uh, but you'll be able to watch it live. And... Uh, we're going to make a night, a Nintendo night every week. So it's either going to probably going to either be Tuesdays or Thursdays. Uh, just follow us on Twitter at boss underscore rush underscore games to find out when we will be streaming. Yes. But I want to, I want to be able to stream some, you know, have a Nintendo night, uh, once a week. So, uh, yeah. Anyways, let's get into this housekeeping Ed. I'm tired of boring people and I'm sure everybody already turned off their feed 20 minutes into the show. We <laughs> haven't even, uh, started talking about what we've been playing, but, uh, this is Nintendo Power Block, Boss Rush Games Nintendo Podcast. Remember, you can email the show at nintendopowerblock at gmail.com. 
or find our social media threads through Boss Rush Games when we ask for questions. You can follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Boss Rush Games or on Twitter at Boss underscore Rush underscore Games. You can also join our Facebook group at facebook.com slash group slash Boss Rush Games. And also, you can follow us on Mixer and Twitch at Boss Rush Games Live. That is mixer.com slash Boss Rush Games Live and twitch.tv slash Boss Rush Games Live. Please follow us. Please give us that little... uh, What's it on Twitch? It's still follow, right, on Twitch? Yeah. Uh, give us those follows. We really appreciate it. You, you can subscribe to our YouTube page at youtube.com slash Boss Rush Games. Uh, please subscribe and share. We got a whole bunch of new content lined up coming to you soon. Uh, this week is the debut of 1v1. Uh, if you're listening on podcast services, it is on the Boss Rush podcast feed every fr- other Friday. Uh, Ed, you are the first interview up i believe yes so uh yeah 1v1 is where we kind of go through and talk to different creators and how they go about creating things how they started what inspires them and you know if they've had any difficulties in their uh creative process and and just kind of you know talk about what they're creating is pretty much it so uh Mm -hmm. of course the first four episode are your boss rush crew which is edward me jesse and ray and then uh Following us, uh, Antonio Guillen, I'm interviewing him Thursday night, and uh, the girls from uh, the the Bad Bitches podcast uh, will be up there as well. So, uh, like I said, every other Friday on the Boss Rush podcast feed. Also, Standard Definition, our retro and nostalgic podcast, is also every other Friday opposite of 1v1. So uh, our first two episodes are recorded in the bag, edited, uploaded. Uh, Your first episode will be Friday, and it is uh, very good. I'll just say that. Yes. Uh, So also, you can find all of our content on BossRushGames.com and subscribe to our podcasts at BossRushGames.com slash subscribe. All right, Ed. We're 23 minutes into the episode. Ah. Why don't we talk about what we've been playing? What are, what are you playing? I think we're playing the same game. I want to say we're yes. playing the same game. I think we're both playing Tokyo Mirage Sessions. Sharp FE Encore. V. Uh, yes. Shin Megami Tensei Cross Fire Emblem Crossover. Uh, it's basically some pe- a lot of people online are describing it as Persona 4.5 Lite. <laughs> Uh, I don't know where they got that idea from. I'm like, where the heck is the person? This is not Persona at all. <laughs> I mean, it kind of is with the Performa stuff. Like, it kind of, it kind of is. But I mean, it's not Persona esque. It's, it's in the vein of Persona. I would say it's not a Persona like. I was about to say, come on, wait a minute. You do not catch any of the enemies and merge them together. No, no, I said that's light, okay, that's... light, oh. light, light, <laughs> light. <laughs> I need to play Persona 4. Uh, but anyways, Ed, what, do you, what are you thinking about this game? This game is uh, a game that we have actually been... <laughs> Funny story, our first, very first episode of Pod and Play was Tokyo Mirage Session Sharp FE yes. for the Wii U. We've had four different episodes titled What Wii U Games Deserve to be Ported to the Switch this year. And Tokyo Mirage Sessions has been part of three of those conversations. Mm-hmm. So we've been pulling for this game for a while. We really enjoyed it on the Wii U. I didn't finish on the Wii U, but I am... I am very impressed with this, the, how this game kind of holds up on the Switch. Uh, but how are, how are you enjoying it so far? Just like the Wii U, it's such a phenomenal game. Like, it's true JRPG. It keeps me on the, my grind tip. It's it, it, it solved your, your concern about how they was going to do the talking thing. Mm-hmm. Um, the conversation part with the Wii U pad. Now they just put it on the screen, or if you're playing it handheld, you'll see it right there where you can read it easily. I think they need to fix the text because the text is still small, but 
it is what it is. I feel like um, it's I feel like it's bigger than it was on the Wii U, unless like the Wii U pad was just blurry and I just am just bad at reading. <laughs> it's, which is it's, also very possible <laughs> it was the text was bigger on the wii u um and they're probably right but like trying to play it on my tv because i'm far away trying to see the wording when i go to the text thing is th- the print is very small and so it's just like uh i need to scoot up to my tv to see what they're actually saying <laughs> yeah uh but it's like when i play in handheld mode i can read it with ease and everything but it's such a phenomenal game uh i think it still deserves the 9.0s and 9.5s um i think more people bought this game and more people are showing it off and playing it and stuff uh i, I think i, it, I it's, think it's already uh, outsold the wii u version i think so yeah i i went like around one o'clock to Best Buy to make sure that they had it out and stuff. They had like seven copies. So I'm just like, yeah, I need this um, before everybody get off for of work and go buy it. And then I skedaddle myself off hmm. to Shake Shack before I went home. I also got the Metroid, uh, the Dark Samus Amiibo, um, which is real cool. But yeah, Tokyo Mirage Session. I'm drawing the music, the anime uh, segments. Um, the grinding, learning the combos, what works on what enemy and what doesn't. Um, right now, I'm just grinding to get stronger. Hopefully, I'm, I could get to level, at least about level 12 um, from where I'm at. Uh, because now there are some special dark kind of uh, enemies. And I'm going to see if I can level up and get stronger. So I could go meet them and like you know just really destroy them and get my levels up more and more and stuff but i really am enjoying this game um truly i it it won't be in the game of the year nominations due to the fact that it's a port but if we are doing like what's the best port of 2019 this is highly up there this is like the first rank now they do win worker hd the battle <laughs> that H- Wind Waker HD and Twilight Princess, that's going to be a literal battle. Uh, because I love both of those games. And I don't know. I'm like, how do you... How do you do Twilight Princess and how do you do HD and how do you do Wind Waker HD? And do you make both games 40 or $50? I and think then, I think they're oh, gonna go I think they're gonna do sixty for both. I'm not gonna lie to you, but I think like once all the Wii U games are ported over, finally, I think we should have <laughs> a best Wii U games on Switch episode. <laughs> yeah, because uh, you know that episode's coming. You know, oh, at some oh, point yeah. we're gonna have to do that episode. <laughs> I, I, yeah, when you and Ray was talking about Super Mario, well, actually all you guys were talking about Super Mario 3D World being better than Odyssey. I'm just like, ah, you can't do this. And I was just at home watching the episode, like I can't do this. <laughs> My heart, I can't because I love Odyssey and I love 3D. Oh, 3D World is wow. breathtaking. See, 3D amazing. World like, is so good, dude. 3D oh. World, 3D World is, dude. It's. Uh, it's it's, th- it's the uh, for me it is the best Mario game for me like I mean and, and I know like there's games that are better mm-hmm. like I know that probably Galaxy is probably better and like you know Odyssey is is a lot of people's favorite and whatnot but like for me it just feels like it just really feels like 3D World is takes the 2D stuff that I love and puts mm-hmm. it in a 3D world that I can kind of run around in but it still has that okay, let's get to the end of the level in the in the, in the the flagpole, but it still has the secret coins that you can find. It's just like, it's just like the perfect little Mario game for me, you know? Like, yes. I, I just, I just love it, you know? It's just, oh, it's so it's good. It's a great, like you said, a great mixture of 2, 2D and 3D, that 2.5D in that 3D area. It's just, it, it, it it's a perfect 10. Like, and I still give a perfect chance to Mario Odyssey because I like the level design and all the challenge in there. And that game just so deep and so much that you could do in it. You'd be like, wow. But 3D World from level to level, like the level design is 
bunkers good. I like I love every time where you got a race and you hit the little dash thing and you're just going through all of this stuff. Like, this is the Sonic game that is done right in a sense. And I just like 3D, to have 3D World with, I hope with some added levels or like just some bonus stuff added to it if they decide to do that. Um, Like, to me, that would be worth another $60. And yeah. then re and then re-release some some amiibo, re-release the amiibos that went along with 3D World. Like Nintendo has a chance to do that. Like do yeah, like second, the, the Super print. Mario set. I've yeah. I've I've never been able to find the Super Mario set. Any of them. Well, some of them I have, but like I've never been able to find them. I want them really bad, and I've just never been able to find them. I would be I would be here for a four pack, 3D World thing, 3D World amiibo. Give me that four pack. Yeah, I would pay twenty seven ninety nine for that. Uh, you guys mentioned the Skylander stuff. Uh, that's another the conversation we have <laughs> Friday doors this for Metroid. Oh boy, uh, the retro show. Uh, but yeah, Tokyo Mirage Session, fa- phenomenal game, like fantastic. I I still believe it deserves a nine point oh and a nine point five. Um, it's really a game that you just really dive in and like I said it gives me that JRPG vibes where you just want to grind you know the only other game that's been like that for me has been like Final Fantasy 12 in a sense and normally when I'm playing an RPG I love grinding love listening to maybe the game music a podcast different shows having conversations if I can uh but I love that in Tokyo Mirage Session, just like, man, I'm playing this every day and I want to play more and more of it and stuff. Even though I've been jumping around here and there, um, Tokyo Mirage Session has really been taking up a lot of my time. And I just want to be overpowered so I can uh, beat these bosses like crazy. I know. Like, it, it's the, the grind is fun, right? Like, it just, it feels, <laughs> it feels like a. S- s- like it, it to to be honest, like it fe- like when you first look at the screen and the and the and like the the HUD and like all the different moves that you kind of unlock right away, almost it's like it feels a little bit overwhelming at first, but like it's really like a simple RPG, right? And it really just it feels that way, and it feels great, you know, to to just play like a, a simple RPG that you can get invested in the characters and. Mm-hmm. You know, as a huge Fire Emblem fan, I feel like it's uh, a good time. You know what I mean? Like it just, uh, I I love seeing like when you get in there and like you see Crom and then you see the uh, the red haired guy, and then he has one of the characters from Fire Emblem Fates. And then when you, as you move along and get costumes, like you can see Joker from Persona Five uh, costume in there and. Uh, I know that they're supposedly adding uh, Fire Emblem Three Houses costumes at some point. Like, uh, yeah, just, I'm just, I'm just really just in love with this game. Right? It makes me want. It almost makes me want a full on uh, Fire Emblem RPG. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it just kind of makes me want that too. Uh, not that this game is b- bad. I'm just saying, like, it just. Like if if they ever made like a full on Fire Emblem RPG, I would want it to be like this because it is it is really good. Uh, but then the the crazy thing about this just like what is the story of the Fire Emblem? And it's just like who cares? Just bring give me all the characters and let me fight stuff. Who cares? <laughs> well, yeah, well, yeah. But it's just like, uh, Fire Fire Emblem, Fire Emblem means a lot to me. I would say that, but it's just like taking it and putting it in like a traditional RPG action or a time base. The story would have to really matter to me. Yeah, uh, and, and and that's that's a personal thing for me. No, no, I get it. I would I would want a cool story too. But also, the first time I've ever really been invested in a Fire Emblem story was Three Houses. So, yes, I mean, uh, that's just just me. And Corey. Please yeah. don't let that happen because I'll be, I will leave the podcast and try to be recording <laughs> that game for physical. I'm sorry, everybody. I know the digital it will be up, but I'm like, no, I need the physical for this one. Uh, I literally need the physical. <laughs> yeah, I, man, physical. I I don't have room for anything anymore. <laughs> like I, 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 I've been trying to live this clean lifestyle, and it's been working out pretty well. But uh, 
I literally been tempted to go on Amazon to buy another memory card. <laughs> I know. I've been I've been kind of tempted to, to. I've been. I'm trying to wait for that one terabyte to come down. But once it comes down, I will be getting it. I've also been like, oh, being really annoyingly looking at Amazon at Switch lights. <sighs> but I can't. All right. Like I just. I like I would. But I'm like, why? Why do you need one? Your Switch is just fine. Stop it. Yes. I have to tell myself to stop it. <laughs> so. Yes. But if the Pro does come out, uh, I think I'll be owning, owning an original Switch and a Pro. So. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, uh, are, have you been playing anything else you want to talk about or just, just Tokyo Mirage Sessions? Uh, it's pretty much for Switch Tokyo Mirage Session. And, uh, a little bit more spark light. I play uh, Destiny Connect, J Town Plus, um, the the pass Way of the Fist, uh, the Pacifist. Um, I think that's the name. Uh, yeah, Way of the Pacifist. Uh, Batman Enemy Within. I, I need to jump back into because there's a point that uh, I'm still in the first episode, but I need to jump back in. Um, I picked up puzzles and Puzzle and Dragons Go. Uh, which came out of nowhere. Oh, the uh, Switch one? Yeah. I heard it wasn't it, very good. It's okay, but you really only could play it uh, in handheld mode. You can't really play it in dock. Because I tried to play it with my uh, Pro Controller, and it wouldn't let me hmm. at all. And I'm just like, what in the heck is this? That's, so, that's weird. Yeah. Um, pretty much that's that's only what i've been playing i'll be jumping into some more stuff um because i've been looking at uh looking at a lot of my switch stuff that i'm like i need to play this and beat it i need to play this and beat it i need to play this and beat it uh so um once i do all of that i'll be good to go um but yeah hmm well yeah, I mean, I've been playing Tokyo Mirage Sessions. I played, I played through the prologue and got to like the first kind of opening thing, and I just, I mean, like, I just really love the characters and the the way like everything's kind of presented and how wacky mm-hmm. it is and how colorful it is. Dude, the colors are just the colors in this game are oh, amazing. I love, yeah, like I know Atlas and Persona in particular has always had a way with like presenting like menus and stuff very very colorful and very just uh you know very stylish and this this game does the same man it's super stylish and it doesn't disappoint at all uh yes but i mean like i said i've only played about an hour and 20 minutes of it i've been really kind of soaking in the opening and also like i said i've been working on the website and stuff so uh that's uh been taking up most of my time but last night in bed i went to bed early earlier than normal it was like 9 40 9 45 and i was like i need to play something before pow block tomorrow because i'm really tired of not having anything to talk about (laughs) and just (laughs) and i was like i'll play like the first half hour of tokyo mirage sessions i ended up playing for like an hour and a half (laughs) and i was like oh well i guess i should go to bed now because i have to be up early so Um, but yeah, man, Tokyo Mirage Sessions is a fantastic RPG. I, I really encourage people to go out and get it because it is, uh, I love the characters and I love the music in particular. And, uh, the only thing that like, you know, and this is just me being a dumb American, but like, I don't understand, I don't. I don't know any of the characters' names because they're all in Japanese, but like they're they don't say them the way that they're spelled yeah. in the game because like the game doesn't have English voice acting, and like it it's just like I have trouble keeping up with the characters because like I know like what I know the characters' names when I see when I read them right, but I I don't know who any of the character I can't pronounce any of the characters' names, and so yes. like it's kind of like d invests me a little bit but i'm still like i'm still in it like it's still like really fun so uh i think i just think it's like a very uplifting it seems like it's going to be very a very positive jrpg uh so 
yeah, that's, that's kind of all I have to say about it. But it's 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 a great one. I hope I hope people go out and buy it and give it a chance because it's uh, it deserves it. So, and I, like I said, I think it's already outsold the Wii version, the Wii U version. Uh, not that it really had a chance on Wii U because it came out what in the last year of the Wii's life cycle, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, probably not the time to be buying Wii U games. <laughs> <laughs> I man, I now it, it's so weird that you mentioned that and after playing this game uh and and this is i know this doesn't connect and it sound and it sounds off but like i want to see Kone steam now come to switch and i kind of i think for our part two i think i would love for them to go into this anime style of tokyo morale session like if atlas did the artwork for it i'm not saying that the comic book uh dark bow uh, black line uh, style of the first one like I, I'm nothing against that but I think Kone Steen just needs something more expressive um, and if they decided to do like a part 2 to it and did it for Switch I would like that to do that in the, in the artwork Yeah, I really, I really feel like they just did that hard black outline mm-hmm. because it was a 3DS game and like the yes. smaller screens and like you know it being a strategy game it was kind of tough to see some of the units until it went down into the third person view so like i feel like they took that approach just so it was easier to see the characters move around the the environments uh still still a fun game i'm gonna argue i will argue that forever but uh i mean it wasn't great but it was fun you know it wasn't like a trash fire like the internet seems to think it was so yeah the internet, the internet's just mad because they didn't make advance wars they just made more uh uh they just made that instead so um but they're also mad that that, that nintendo put another fire emblem character in smash which by the way it's only the seventh fire emblem character just gonna throw that out there I heard, I heard all the girls and the laughter about that on the show. I'm like, hey, I'll take them. Dude, I like I like Byleth. I'm it's like the first Fire Emblem character I've been excited about. I'm not gonna lie yet. <laughs> and it's and it's not like oh, oh they added another Fire Emblem character. I'm like y'all gonna pay the bill. I mean y'all gonna download him, buy him or whatever, and y'all must are gonna learn him up and down. Yeah, and do videos about it. So stop complaining. That's what I'm saying. So anyways, uh, that's, that's all we've been playing. Uh, we're going to get into some of these news bits here. There's, there's quite a few news stories. Uh, mm-hmm. nothing really, nothing really major, but enough to, to fill a show, I guess. So, uh, our first news story, uh, Nintendo reminds us of 20 exciting games coming to switch in 2020 with a new infographic. Uh, now most of these I think are, or like first half of 2020, I want to say. So, uh, obviously Tokyo Mirage Sessions is out already. Uh, Snack World, the Dungeon Crawl Gold is coming in February. Uh, Darksiders Genesis, Devil May Cry 3 uh, are, are all coming in February. In March, we're getting Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, Animal Crossing. In April, we're getting Trials of Mana, which is an action RPG that looks really fun. I'm actually like really looking forward to that. Yes. Uh, Battle for Bikini Bottom, the SpongeBob remaster, is coming in May. And, of course, the Pokemon expansion passes are coming uh, in June. So uh, there's that. And then major games that don't have a release date, uh, The Outer Worlds is coming, Panzer Dragoon, the remake, Minecraft Dungeons, Doom Eternal, Bravely Default, Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles remastered, No More Heroes, uh, Lego, Star Wars, The Skywalker Saga, Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition, which I'm also very excited for. Hollow Knight Silk Song, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Fighter Pass Volume 2, which I'm very excited for. And uh, Deadly Premonition 2. Uh, oh, I also popped Smash in, by the way. Uh, and I played I played a lot of Smash this weekend, to be honest with you. Uh, oh, great. It, dude, that game, like, I played a lot when it came out, and then I kind of fell off of it. Mm-hmm. And then I've gone back in to check out all the new fighters and stuff, right? But Smash is like a really fun game, even by yourself. I've I've kind of gone back into the spirit board and tried to like, I kind of want to go through and play through it and finish it. Uh, 
I don't know if I'm going to, but it's kind of like a idea I had <laughs> this weekend. Uh, but I, I played a lot of the characters that I haven't played before. Like I played Terry Bogart. Uh, he's all right. He kind of plays like a mixer between Ryu and uh, Little Mac. He's like, I, I just, I don't really care for that kind of fighter. Uh, played some Banjo. I don't know if I care for Banjo. Like, I like the idea of Banjo, but he's got some weird moves that I just don't really care for. Uh, but also, I only played, like, one match with him, so I just... Like, it's just a sense of sitting down and learning these fighters, uh, obviously. So, uh, played some Banjo, and I played with Joker, which, boy, I bet if I played Persona, I would know what's happening, but I have no idea what's happening with Joker. Uh, yeah, so... You, you have to play... I have to finish Persona 5, but... Yeah, that's something you have to play. You have to play Persona Five to understand Joker on Smash. Yeah, uh, so I did. I did play Smash, but what do you think? I mean, this is a pretty solid list, right? Like for a first half, mm-hmm. I would say. Yeah, it, it's funny that you mentioned uh, Doom Eternal because the new story just came out um, on Nintendo Life. Say, uh, Panic Button needs time to refine Doom Eternal Switch. Is software says it won't be a huge de- delay. Uh, yeah, and so I mean, uh, we knew that it was delayed on Switch. We just didn't know how long. Yeah, which is fine. Yeah, Look, uh, Panic Button does good work. We've we've talked about it a thousand times on here, especially with you know Doom twenty sixteen, Wolfenstein two, Wolfenstein Youngblood. Like the reasons why that game is bad is not Panic Button's fault. Uh, <laughs> Hob. Uh, Torchlight 2 Definitive Edition, like yes, they've done some fantastic ports on the Switch, and like I, I think Doom is going to be another solid one. You know, there's a, there's also a talking point thing on Nintendo Life that I was reading. Uh, it's like, uh, hold on, where is it at? It's it's talking about uh, how like will you sacrifice the the where's I want to oh how often do you make the Switch sacrifice? Uh, it talks about you know games like Doom and The Witcher uh, on Switch, and if you play them on Switch, like are you are you really like sacrificing your uh, performance uh, if you play it portably, right? And uh, you know comparing it to the PS4 and Xbox One versions and the PC versions of Doom and Wolfenstein, like it's just a really good read. I I encourage you guys all to go over there and read it. I. I really think it's a good read and like there's people like us who play them on switch because a, we like to play it on switch and support third parties on switch. But also like for me in particular, it's very convenient because I don't get to use the TV a lot. And when I do, I'm usually playing like something else like Hellblade, you know, like I'm trying to finish that up this week and, uh, that requires the TV. So like, I, I, I mean, like I have some of these games on, on uh xbox because either through game pass or uh just buying them directly right but like like i said i bet i would finish the witcher if it was on if i played it on switch right like i Mm -hmm. I just have i have more my lifestyle has more time for switch games than it does the other games i guess is what i'm really trying to say uh and yeah oh go ahead sorry oh uh, the performance is like really important because you know even with bigger games that before they get ported to switch they have had some difficulties on bigger consoles on ps4 and xbox one so when it does come to switch it may not have the current performance that like after the patches and stuff but if they run really good and run, these, run really smoothly and you and it pulls you into the experience where you just that stuff don't even matter anymore, then it's kind of doing its job and you're getting the same experience like everybody else. You know, you're getting like the story, the fun uh, gunplay, uh, the challenging bosses and fights and stuff. You're still, you're still getting all of that. Um, so you'll be able to talk with friends and family members or just people around the world who want to know about it or who have played it you get to uh you get to chime in about your experience with it and say if you have fun or not um 
And so when games do come to when games do come to Switch, I, like I said, it, for for stuff to come on Switch, it's almost feel like it's an instant guarantee sale for the publisher and developer. Um, regardless of what the performance is, you know, people like I said, they may have laughed at the Witcher Three, but it came out, people got it. And I mean, it's, it's they were selling. Coming. It's selling on Switch, right? Like that's right. the point. Is like. Yeah, people were making fun of it, but how many people went out and bought it and are playing it? And, like, of course, it's not the best version of the game, but it's like it's like what I've been saying since the Switch came out. It's the convenience factor of, yeah. okay, well, my wife and I are watching a show on TV, and I don't really watch TV, but so, like, we usually watch whatever she wants to watch, right, for the most yes. part. And, like, I mean, like, it's not like we're watching, like, you know, my wife is a big fan of like Real Housewives, right? Like we, you and I make that joke a lot in, in the chat, right? And uh, mm-hmm. so like, it's not like we're watching that stuff, but like if we're watching like a documentary or something on Netflix or uh, a show that like doesn't require a lot of attention, like we watch uh, on Netflix, we're watching uh, Grace and Frankie, which is uh, just uh, a half hour kind of dramedy on on netflix, that netflix. I, it's, I, I was i was watching the sixth season to yeah. uh, a little while today i'm like oh yeah. i didn't know the new season was out yeah it came out wednesday and like like we were okay. we, like we watched that and like i'll i'll bust out my switch while we're watching something like that you know like mm-hmm. i don't have to pay attention too much but i can still like keep an ear on there and like it's easy to put down the switch when the kid is like coloring on the walls or the table, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, and just oh. say, don't do that. <laughs> uh, she's discovered crayons in the last like three weeks. So, uh, uh, but, it, but, but being able to take that long exper- that experience, like if you're on the, like, cause when I come and see you, Corey, I'll have the Witcher three. And I'm like, well, probably about the first five or seven quests might take me the whole train ride. <laughs> so, you know, I might zoom in, look up and be like, oh, I'm already here. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and that's a good way where you don't have to lug your uh, your your PC around and stuff to get that experience. Yeah. Uh, so, like, I, I mean, I plan on getting, there's a couple, there's three games on, on well, kind of like four big games on the Switch that I want to get this mm-hmm. year. Uh, the Witcher is one. Xenoblade Chronicles one is one. Uh, Dragon Quest eleven S is one, and Tales of Vesperia uh, Definitive Edition. Like those are the kind of like the major RPGs I want to get this year on Switch. And like, I have The Witcher on Xbox. Am I going to play it on Xbox? Probably not because it just take too much time. And I would rather be playing other games like Halo or Destiny or Gears or uh, you know something like that. All right. Or you know whenever Hellblade 2 comes out like I feel like the shorter experiences or like the shooting the shooter experiences are better clearly but like RPG style stuff like the playing the Witcher really on I did play a little bit of the Witcher like two weeks ago on Xbox just because like the show came out and I was kind of like itching for an open world RPG and like I didn't really feel like restarting uh Assassin's Creed Odyssey right now on Xbox and uh so I popped the Witcher in and I was running around that world and I was like man I like this world I want to be in it but like I'm not going to invest the time here when I know I'm not going to get to play it a whole lot here right like if I started the Witcher I would it would take me all year to finish like half of that game on Xbox to whereas the Switch like I can knock out a few missions every night and be fine, you know, or like two or three times a week play it, you know? So I don't know. I I just, my point was that was a good read. I I encourage people to go read it. If you're debating on whether or not to get certain games for switch, it's, it's definitely an eye opener and a might convince you one way or the other. So, uh, but anyways, speaking of, uh, doom, I'm looking at our pot and play right now. The, the doom one and uh <laughs> on the because i'm posting it to the website i'm sorry if you guys are hearing clicking i probably should have thought about that before we started but uh but anyways uh the the what do you think of this lineup for the first half of the year for switch like i i think it's pretty i think it's 
I wouldn't say it's the strongest lineup they've ever had in the beginning, but I think it's pretty strong, you know, especially I, kicking off with Tokyo Mirage Sessions and Darksiders in February. I, I can't wait for Darksiders, right? I, Luke and yes. I on on Boss Rush last week talked about a little bit because he's been playing through the series via Game Pass on Xbox, and mm. I like Darksiders I do, lot. too. I'm, and I'm looking forward to Genesis. Like, I, I'd be... I, Probably will be double dipping, definitely getting it on Switch and playing it on on Xbox. Um, yeah, I to answer your the first part question, I think it's really strong, and it's good that they're doing this because definitely with all the delays that have been happening with some of the bigger titles, this gives Nintendo more of a push for them to get their system out and get these games out and get a lot of sales instead of them getting passed by and overlooked. Um, yeah, I think, plus I think, you know, having a Pokemon game out in November mm-hmm. with an expansion pass coming, having another Pokemon co- coming out in March, or right, March? February. February. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, it's March 6th. And then uh, Animal Crossing on oh. March 20th. Like I thought it was February. Oh. Okay. Uh, I think like, I I think the Switch is not going to have a problem selling, especially with, uh, you know, Final Fantasy kind of getting out of the way and all the games being delayed yeah. till the fall. Like I I think the Switch is probably going to clean up pretty nicely this spring, which I think yeah. Nintendo would rather them clean up in the spring. And then, like you sell the systems now, right, with Pokemon or Animal Crossing or something, and then people will are going to go flock to you. Like they're gonna you're gonna have more people to buy games in the fall. Right, like, right. It's, like when Breath of the after, Wild Two comes out this fall, right? <laughs> especially after you just got a Switch for Christmas or a birthday, you know, and all the sales that went through. Um, besides, besides Game Pass with Fight the Final Fantasy and Yakuza, besides those games, if you need more recommendations and games, this kind of first half. It's like almost be like, yeah, you need to own these and play these on your system. These are great titles that are going to be coming out. So um, I just think it's really strong. I, I, I made a tweet about this. I was just like, with all the, delay, the uh, delays happening, Nintendo is like winning the first half of the year without really doing anything. Yeah. Because all the must haves are being pushed to later half of the year or close to like E3 and stuff so why not uh, be like well that's pushed oh I still got money I'm not gonna hold on to my money let me get some of these Nintendo games Yeah. Oh, and by the time those games come out you'll be done with the Nintendo stuff or you might have saved your money in a good sale for those games physically or digitally may have came up and you go snag them and you still are supporting the Nintendo Switch yeah yeah so I mean I I don't. I don't really know if I'm going to get Animal Crossing, but I will definitely be getting. Uh, I will definitely be getting Dark Siders for sure. Mm. Oh yeah. Uh, I might try Animal Crossing, and then I will. Pro- I will definitely be getting Trials of Mana for sure. Um, yes. And then the obviously the Smash Fighter Pass I'll be getting and uh, Xenoblade. So. Yeah. Yes. There's there's that there's there's some there's some decent things coming for sure. Uh, and we still got the direct and mm-hmm. like that actually telling- leads into our next story hold that thought <laughs> uh, Nintendo says expect game announcements quote throughout the year <laughs> this is just such a silly story uh, just in case anyone out there was worried about Nintendo's lineup of releases in 2020 you'll be pleased to know that the gaming giant has confirmed that more announcements will be coming our way throughout the rest of the year because of course they are Yesterday, we shared an infographic uh, that shows off 20 exciting games coming to Switch in 2020, taken from an email sent out by Nintendo itself. It's actually a pretty solid list already, in our opinion, but Nintendo followed the image with a, this unsurprising but pleasing statement. You can look forward to announcements throughout the year, so keep your eyes peeled for more games joining this list. By the way, some people on Reddit thought that because they said the word peeled, like keep your eyes peeled that we're going to uh-huh. get a third Donkey Kong game this year. I'm just throwing that out there. Uh but I just I thought it was funny that this was just a news story that Nintendo's going to have more announcements this year because Okay, and, and I could justify this in a little bit. So, um 
I think C C S or something happened and Alienware has this kind of let's say Oh the the image. UFO. The the UFO yeah. Project UFO, which is like their version of a of a portable gaming PC. Like but yes. it's but it looks like a switch. Yes, and so this thing called Trusted Reviews kind of put a tweet out there, and just like even though the Switch is fine and dandy, it really don't have any games, and even though it's a little bit cheaper, that little thing, if you look at it, is about six hundred plus some dollars, and you're playing a whole bunch of PC. But I'm just like, okay, so but you really pretty much stole Nintendo's idea and tried to make it your own. But anywho. To say that it doesn't have any games on it, people went bonkers. And so so if you think about it in that context, Nintendo said, yeah, we got games that we're going to be announcing throughout the year. Stuff that you guys don't even know yet. Just be patient. We'll get to them. We know how you guys have been asking how we're going to be... You know, when X Series X and PlayStation 5, whenever they come out, if we're going to still have anything for the system, we got a lot of stuff planned. Once again, we're Nintendo. You don't think we got stuff in a, in our back pocket? We're the company that got like, what, 50 or $100 million in the bank in case of something happens to our company? Nintendo, Nintendo got some things up their good old sleeves. They probably got some business deals going on with indies and third party that we don't know about. They're getting their directs together. They're getting their E3 stuff together. Um, there was a story that uh, um, uh, Phil Spencer and... Uh, 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 who's the other Nintendo president? Uh, um, Fear Co- oh. or Doug Bowser? Doug Bowser. Both of them were in Japan at the same time, and someone was just like, "Is Microsoft talking to Nintendo and and, and anything?" But I mean, you know, uh, you know they are because I mean, besides like this the games that you can speculate are coming to Switch, like ori and battle toads are two pretty major games that i think are probably going to end up on switch but like yeah they're probably talking to nintendo because minecraft dungeons is already confirmed for switch right like I, yeah i i mean they're they are a nintendo third-party developer at this point uh, i mean yes. regardless of like if halo ever comes or not like you know what i mean like they they have yeah. they have minecraft they have ori they have uh cuphead like they're already on the platform so I mean, of course they're going to keep talking to Nintendo about other games, right? So right, and I and I still I, think Rare, I still think Rare Replay is going to come to Switch at some point. Shoot, yeah, I I really think this is going to sound bunkers. I really think that Nintendo may be doing something for Microsoft for Series X, and not saying that that they're going to put Mario on it. But I could literally see some kind of costume or something showing up in Halo Infinite. I could I could just see be like, you know what, Microsoft, you did a lot for us. Better yet, how about this? How about we get one of your your lower teams, Obsidian? Let's just say. How about we get Obsidian to do a remake of Mario RPG? to put on switch and while that's happening you guys could use seven suit in halo infinite oh gosh stop it <laughs> just 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 talking out the blue but if, if nintendo and microsoft are if they happen to be in japan together talking that's speculation just speculations just wild ideas could come from that. Nintendo and Microsoft talking. Come on now. Even my, even Microsoft talking to Sony, trying to help them out with PlayStation Five. That might be something we don't know. But Nintendo and Microsoft talking. If they're talking, money is flowing, mm-hmm. and they both are going to benefit uh, from that. Yeah. Yeah. So, I don't know. We'll see. I just, I just, th- I just think it was funny that Nintendo was a. Uh... Said that they have new games coming this year, and it's like, of course you do. Uh, but yeah, I mean, like you said, I I would imagine Microsoft and Nintendo are going to start working pretty closely soon. Uh, what regardless? Which 
would you fall out your chair if Game Pass, not Game Pass, but if Project S Cloud comes to Nintendo? I mean, that was a switch. I would be pretty excited, but also, I th- I think Nintendo would really have to like really work with Microsoft in terms of mm-hmm. incorporating Xbox Live into the system. Yeah. Uh, all these different types of things where you know Microsoft excels at and Nintendo lacks at, like online stuff, Xbox Live, uh, friends lists, messaging back and forth, like. Those are the types of things that I think Nintendo should really consider talking to Microsoft about. Uh, I and I, th- th- that's poss- possibility a big thing. Like if they work to me personally, if they were going to do a Switch Pro, that would be maybe number two on the list. Mm-hmm. Talk to Microsoft about this online thing. Let them help Nintendo put that money in and let Microsoft help you. They're not trying to do anything. They're not trying to reap any rewards or anything for that. They already got enough that they could get that from. But if they're willing to help your online uh, structure to make it better, let them do that. Yeah. So, I mean, I I really think that uh, I wish Nintendo would really talk to Microsoft in terms of that. But mm-hmm. uh, we'll see. I don't I don't think they will. But, I mean, I, I would really love to see Xbox Live Incorporated. I would love to see... Uh, because like the Xbox app on, on a windows PC is like really, uh, easy to use. And, uh, I, I, I think that even if you just put an Xbox app on the switch and navigate through there for X cloud, like, I think that would do wonders for the system. Yeah. Uh, but that's just me. I don't know yet, but mm- and I feel like they don't even have to. They don't. To me personally, they don't even have to put the Xbox Store on there. Just no, it's if, just if, like if you just do like. For me, it would be like, even if you had to pay for the Xbox app or subscribe to the app mm-hmm. on like because like I think what they would do, in terms of like you would have to be a Game Pass Ultimate subscriber for this, right? Like yes, okay. You if you're Game Pass, you get it on Xbox, right? But if you're a Game Pass Ultimate subscriber, you get it at all these different places, right? Like that's what I see Ultimate being at some point, right? Even if they raise the price five bucks a month, uh, you know, you can play it on your phone, you can play it on Switch, you can play it on your Xbox, you can play it on PC, uh, whatever smart TVs have Xbox apps, you'll be able to play it through there. Like, I really think that that's the way Microsoft sees themselves now, mm-hmm. and like they want to be on every platform they possibly can be, and and that's how they're going to get you into their ecosystem. Uh, which I think is really smart, but uh, I I just really need Nintendo. I really want Nintendo to. Uh... If if Nintendo was able to do a deal like that, that you pay fifty dollars, you pay fifty dollars just for the whole program. But if you want to do like X Cloud and do Ultimate, like you said, actually do five dollars a month. Yeah. Ten dollars. Ten dollars if you want Ultimate, so that. Yes, well, I, entry, I think I think what you to, would have to, to pay for to pay for the game. The, I think what uh, I think what you would have to do, lot. right? Like you okay. sign up for for Xbox Live Alt, mm-hmm. or Xbox Game Pass Ultimate, right? Uh, that gets you Xbox Live. That gets you Game Pass on PC and and Xbox. Yeah, uh, I think what you would have to do. So Microsoft knows that Nintendo gets a cut you would have to sign into an Xbox live account on your Nintendo mm-hmm. switch and link your switch to your Microsoft account is how okay. I would see that going. Just so like Microsoft knows that like, okay, uh, whatever amount we agreed to goes to Nintendo because this person linked their switch to this. Uh, you know what I mean? Like it's, it would yeah. be similar to like how they paid developers, right? Like, uh, a poor, depending on playtime or whatever we paid you to get your game on game pass. Like this is how it works. And Nintendo is going to be offered a, a similar deal. So you can have uh, an app on there. Does game pass and game ultimate go through project S cloud though? Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, I think, I think if you, if you are an Xbox game pass ultimate subscriber, you just mm -hmm. get X cloud. Like I think, I mean, Jesse would be the one to really know about that because yeah. he's and, signed and up for th- it. But and that's why I, I the the fifty month deal is the twenty dollars for Nintendo Online, so you still get the NES, you still get the Super Nintendo games, um, you you get the Game Pass Live Ultimate, um, 
with Game Game Pass Game Pass Ultimate and Live. Um, so you get a good deal with that. Uh, you mostly you mostly are streaming stuff. You're probably playing some of that money is going to Microsoft because they got to get the servers and stuff running like that. And like that, like you know, linking your account so when you unlock stuff, you get achievements on your game on Xbox, you know, and that's cool and stuff. If you do buy a Microsoft game on uh on your Switch, like Cuphead and stuff, uh, let's say you get bonus, you get bonus coins not only because you're a member and everything. But because it's a Microsoft game, you get bonus coins for your Nintendo points. Mm-hmm. So you can do a survey, but you also the points that the coins that they give you is also bonus. Like so much stuff could happen. We got to move on. I'm sorry. I know. It, <laughs> like I we mean, like we literally could take this. I mean, anywhere. it's a, it's a good conversation to have though, right? And I think like I think once we start doing like bonus content, you know, once we get everything situated, and like I think that that would be a great discussion to have for like some sort of expansion pack or uh whatever yes. we decide to call the bonus uh podcast for for people who subscribe to us right like i i there's a lot of possibilities and i really think that microsoft knows what they're doing i just think i think nintendo needs to be on board is is what the holdup is to be a hundred percent honest with you because I remember when I, uh, well, we can, we can save this conversation for a different time. I just, yes. I think, uh, that Nintendo, uh, I, th- well, there's a, there's a time when Phil Spencer was talking about putting a master chief collection on PlayStation four. So I just, I want to throw that out there. Uh, he's been very vocal about that too. So, uh, but anyways, let's move on to the next story. Nintendo reveals the playable characters in the next wave of DLC for Fire Emblem Three Houses. Uh, the Cindered Shadows side story for the uh, Fire Emblem Three Houses expansion pass. Uh, there are a few new students. Uh, Yuri, Constance, uh, Balthus, and Happy. Uh, Cindered Shadows will arrive next month on the on February 12th and is included uh, in the $24.99 expansion pass. Uh that's pretty much it. You would really have to watch the trailer to get a sense of what these characters are. But basically, it's about a uh, a bunch of students who feel outcast, outcasted by their own houses and have created their own kind of unofficial house. Uh, mm-hmm. And they meet underneath the school. So it's cool, man. I'm I'm ready for more Fire Emblem. Just going to throw that out there. Pretty, pretty yes. excited for that. So. I... Yeah, I'm going to be working my way through it <laughs> this year. I promise. Uh, I mean, I I was pretty excited when I beat it, but I know mm-hmm. there were like, you know how sometimes you play a game and like you learn as you play the game, you learn how to play the game, and you really feel like you want to restart the game now that you know what you, now that you know what you know, right? Instead yes. of be going in blind, like that's how I feel with Fire Emblem now. Like I really want to go back and play it and do and like with what I know now and start a new game and, and really like play like a perfect fire emblem game, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, and I would probably choose a different house because like, just because I would want to see a different story, even though I'm like really attached to those characters, but also you can recruit characters if you get your level up high enough. So, uh, I'm pr- honestly, I really, really want to do that. And I probably will because I'm dumb and obsessed with fire. Emblem. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's that's. I'm excited for this to be honest with you because their logo looks cool, their symbol looks cool. They just the side story looks really neat. Uh, so I, I just I feel like it's a little bit too late, and I wish it was like a, I wish it was like a continuation of the story, yes. right? Instead of like because you know the game kind of ends, and but they kind of leave it open a little bit. To where like the story could continue in a way, uh, depending on how you finish the game. Yes. And like I kind of wish this was like a new chapter of you kind of like almost rebuilding the school, and like spoilers for Fire Emblem, I guess uh, a little bit. You kind of rebuilding the school and like you're kind of forming the new houses, and you kind of want them to kind of 
you know, thrive in their own way. And I like, I kind of wish this was like a new chapter with a new threat instead of, you know, you having this Nintendo has been doing this, this thing where like when they put DLC in a game, it's kind of meant to be played with the game instead of after the game, you know? Uh, I really felt that way with the Zelda DLC, even though I liked it a lot. Like I really felt like if I would have just played the DLC before I beat the game, like it would have felt better. Like it was part mm-hmm. of the game, you know? Uh, and I kind of get that feeling with Fire Emblem Three Houses now, but anyways, I, I, I'm going to go back and play it. Cause I didn't, I, I feel like Fire Emblem with the three different kind of choices or four actually like you can go back and play it differently and kind of have a different experience. And so I don't think this is too bad, but I, I just wish it was like another chapter moving forward instead of kind of, you know, in between. So, yeah, that's all. Well, it's, it's a game that I can, I'm going to be putting work in. I know that much. Uh, so yeah, Fire Emblem's getting new DLC. Very exciting for Fire Emblem fans. Yes. All right, Ed, the last rumor or the last news story we're going to talk about is com- it comes from Games Radar. Uh, and Game Explain actually did a really in-depth video on this. Um, so if you if you want a really in-depth video, it's it's really good. Uh, the rumor is that a new Paper Mario and 2D Metroid game are on the way to Nintendo Switch this year. Uh so that's pretty interesting to see. Uh, Nintendo Switch will get both a new Paper Mario and 2D Metroid game in 2020, according to fresh rumors from prolific industry leaker Savvy. Uh, teasing the news on Twitter, uh, Savvy said that Paper Mario will be, quote, going back to how it was in 2020, suggesting the return of the franchise roots for the Plumber's role-playing spinoff series. Uh Additionally, the leaker claimed that a new 2D Metroid game, not to be confused with Metroid Prime 4, is also in the works for release later this year and does in fact seem to be related to Fusion, the Game Boy Advance title uh, in the acclaimed sci-fi series in 2002. When pressed, Savvy stated their sources have suggested this project is a sequel to that game. So, uh, there's more, but it's I don't know if it's worth reading. Uh, so... I mean, I'm always up for a new Paper Mario RPG if it's really an RPG. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't really need Super Paper Mario or Sticker Star. I mean, Color Splash was okay. I know that that was a rumor for a while that Color Splash would be coming. And Color Splash was actually a really pretty game. But uh, I would really just prefer a new Paper Mario RPG. And I actually... They were they were playing Paper Mario for Nintendo sixty four while they were talking about it because they do really fun stuff like I I really like I've really been becoming a fan of Game Explain lately. Uh, not that I wasn't yeah, they be- do a lot of good work. Not that I wasn't a fan before, but yeah they've they've been doing a lot of solid stuff over there, and I I really want a new Paper Mario RPG. To be a thousand percent honest, I, I love all the Paper Mario. RPGs like I've every time I play them I end up laughing and enjoying them I even stick a star and color splash whatever people want to say about them they can I thoroughly enjoy them I those are the games that I try to buy on day one uh, and the reason why I say try uh, is because if they come out with a day that I don't get paid I just wait for a little bit later <laughs> or people come in and they buy them before I could a chance to buy them in uh, but every time I play those games, I love them. Um, if they want to give me a new one, go ahead and give me a new one. I have no problem. Um, the Metroid one, though, uh, I would, I would have to, I would have to see what, what, where they go with this and what they do with it. I have no problem with the two D ones. I love Samus Returns. Um, uh, I thought, I thought about few... get, I thought about busting out my three D S and like. Mm-hmm getting some 3ds games but and i'm like no because you're you're not gonna play them you're gonna buy them and you're gonna sit there and i I would rather spend my money on switch stuff at this point i my question would be because i think if if this is a follow-up to fusion um i think it's the if we're going by the main games it's supposed to be uh Metroid slash Metroid Zero, Super Metroid, uh, 
other M is supposed to be three. Fusion was three, but because of oh, is it isn't other, Super other Metroid three? Because Samus yeah, Super Returns Metroid is, is two. Samus Returns, yeah. Sorry about that, everybody. So Samus, uh, the Return of Samus slash Samus Return is two. Super Metroid is three. Other M will be four. And Metro Fusion will be five. It should be that. Primes don't count because that's a whole different series. Doesn't Prime, Prime take is, place in between some of the games? Prime was supposed to be taking place before all of Metro actually started. Well, um, because it sounds of, like a sounds like we need some a Metroid expert on the show to talk about this because like <laughs> like. There's, I think Game is playing. I, I, there is a history of or story. There is a timeline story one on YouTube about the Metroid series on what it's supposed to be. I have to go back and look at it. But like the 2D ones is what I'm playing. But other M is not 2D. But it's supposed to be other M is supposed to happen before a fusion happens, uh, because they showed they showed the captain, and then when fusion happens, you get a feeling that the captain is got turned into or got programmed or something. It's, it's very weird but other M and Fusion are supposed to be connected together um, and so this one would be it would be the sixth game in the series in a just regular Metroid series and Prime Prime was supposed to actually be before um all of Metroid happened, but it kind of felt like they split the series in a sense. Um, that that's what I remember when the first Prime came out. Yeah. Um. So, uh, but I'm I'm super excited if they decide to do it. Um. But yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'll I'll take more games on the Switch. I'm not gonna lie to you. Pretty, pretty excited. Uh, to to see what they can do with a 2D Metroid on the Switch, uh, especially because like there's yes. been so many good Metroidvanias in the last three years on Switch specifically. You know, like I I feel like mm-hmm. I feel like it's time for Nintendo to be like, okay, guys, let's move out of the way, please, and uh, <laughs> you know let them work. So we'll we we shall see, sir. We sh- we shall see. Yes. Uh, all right. Money will be ready. Uh, good thing we only have one question this week. Uh, we are going to head into the question block. Remember, you can email the show at nintendopowerblock at gmail.com or look for our social media threads to look for the question threads when we ask for questions. We have only one question this week. So uh, a, li- a light week, but also January is a little light. You know, it's a. Uh, it's a, it's a it's a light month, so I'm sure we'll yes. get some questions once the direct comes out or is announced, or you know. Uh, also, by the way, during the when the next Nintendo Direct comes out, the full direct, we will also be debuting the return of the direct recap show, which is our uh, direct re- <sighs> re- recap show. <laughs> so, oh, I cannot wait! I uh, literally cannot wait. I'm very I'm very excited for that to return uh Uh, mostly because i like talking about nintendo directs yes uh but our question comes from deshaun malone he asks what studio collab collaborations would you like to see nintendo do what studios would you like to see take on a franchise without nintendo's help what games okay so um studio collaborations would i like to see nintendo do uh, like I said, uh, Obsidian and Nintendo doing the Super Mario RPG remake, um, would be one. Uh, I kind of would like to see, um, and this is very, this is going to sound weird. I think, uh, of where and Nintendo got back together to make a game. I would love for that to happen. Uh, Donkey Kong sixty four two. Oh wow! Um, Donkey Kong one twenty eight. Uh, I'm trying to because see Nintendo and so Koei Tecmo they have a great relationship, so that that's completely fine. Um, I 
think yeah. when Nintendo and Konami collide on the Metal Gear game, so I really won't say much about the Incepticon Knights at that time. They all three collide on that game. Um, I think I kind of would want Nintendo probably working with some of the, of course, we want indies and stuff. Um, I kind of like to see Nintendo and Activision do something. Um, what they would do, that would be questionable. Um, because I could see Infinity War doing something for Nintendo. Like, to really get them a challenge. Be like, if you guys had had to make a game that's not Call of Duty, that's not a first person shooter, and you had to make it strictly for Nintendo, what would you guys create? And that probably would fall into um, them taking on a franchise without Nintendo self. So I think Nintendo would uh, would fund anything from re- from not Respawn, Infinity War. It'd be like just create a brand new franchise for the Nintendo console. Um, we'll own it still, but you know, we'll front up the money for you guys to make it for us. Man, you said respawn, and now all I want is like a respawn Nintendo game. Well, a, a respawn Nintendo game is just like that can happen, but I don't want. I we know Metro Prime is already covered, and I wouldn't give the Metro Prime. No, right? I don't. I mean, I don't want that. I wouldn't want them to do Metroid Prime, but I wouldn't mind seeing them do some sort of like. I don't know. I don't. I don't know. Maybe like, honestly, like a Kid Icarus style game, almost. Mm-hmm. Uh, I could although, see. I could be. Respond, I could see Respawn doing that. Although I do have I a give... couple. I do have a couple studios for Kid Icarus. To be honest with you, I would love to see Ubisoft, like an open world Ubisoft style game for Kid mm-hmm. Icarus. Uh, but I mean, I think that's pretty much what Gods and Monsters is. Uh, I. Um, I could see Bethesda and Shin, uh, Shinji Mikami doing Eternal Darkness. Yeah, I could see I could see Tango doing uh, Eternal Darkness. Although I would really like to see the Until Dawn developers do Eternal Darkness. <sighs> I think that would be cool. That'd be interesting. Um. I mean, I, I, I know love... it's not the same like type of game, but I would like to see yeah. them work there because they they do such interesting things with like storytelling at least. And if you give yes. people multiple paths through, like if they if they can take what they do for horror games and put like a psychological thriller aspect to mm-hmm. it and make it kind of dark like Eternal Darkness, I think it yeah. could be. I could think it could be really interesting. Um. I would love to see the team that does for Forza Motorsport make a psych bike. Oh jeez, uh, that would kind of be. I I could see them doing it, doing it, but like what they did with the Wii, um, or uh, Excite Trucks was. I I bought Excite Trucks for the Wii. <laughs> no Nintendo did did Nintendo make a jet game? A what? A jet racing game on N sixty four. A jet racing game. Yeah, I, I have no like idea. Like water jets. Uh, like wave race. Yes, wave race. Yeah, I mean, wave race was awesome. I would love them to make another wave race. Yeah, who would you, who would we get though? Uh, I don't know. Um, <laughs> of, of Criterion was still around. <laughs> dude, you know what I really want though? I would love if. EA reopened EA uh, Sports Big and mm-hmm. made SSX versus 1080 snowboarding. I would buy that in a heart's beat. I think everybody would be like, actually, sh- dude, SSX. I've been hearing a lot of people like reminisce about SSX mm-hmm. lately. Yeah, it's, it's got. I like uh, SSX is like really good. I'm not gonna lie to you. Just out of the blue. What if they put Skate 3 on Switch? I mean, why not? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's... I mean, everybody wants Skate 3, but, like, 
just just for EA to see like let's see how much money we'll get out of this. Let's just put skate. I mean if EA is gonna spend money on the Switch, I'd rather than put Madden and Mass Effect on in Dead Space. Mm. Before well, I, Skate. I, I will put Mass Effect Trilogy, that's what I will want. I mean, yeah, I do. Nice. Dude, what if they made you you're gonna say no because it's not a Metroid game. But what if they made a Mass Effect style Metroid game? Like oh, I would buy that in heartbeat. Like an uh, uh, like an upgradable, but you could work Metroid elements into it. Like you can make kind of like you a, didn't you didn't hear me. I would buy that in a heartbeat. I'm trying to explain to you what kind of game it is because I, I don't care. I know. You just said, you just I am, said I'm aware. And, and, I'm, a, I'm my aware. My money's already gone. <laughs> but. That'd be awesome. I mean, I like oh, my money's already gone. Like, yes, I'm, dude, I'm here for that. Look, I would wanna, I want Halo to have a Metroid style game, and I would still play that on Xbox. Like, <laughs> it, it, give that to me. Like, even if even if they want to do it as a Contra Blazer Prone thing for Halo Infinite, just to download. Like, I would pay, I would pay the dollar to get Game Pass for that to happen. Yeah. Oh, they said that was only a Game Pass exclusive. Yeah, I'll get it. Then I'll cancel the uh, the service because I'll be trying to beat the game. <laughs> be like, oh, that was fun. Don't need Game Pass no more. Thank you for thank you for that serve, Microsoft. Thank you. Uh, but yeah, I would I would want that. Like, I I would buy a physical and a digital copy of that. <laughs> like, oh uh, man, dude, that'd be so good. Um, I would. I mean, in terms of just collaboration stuff, though, I I really love what Nintendo's been doing with Ubisoft. Yes. I don't know what franchise I would give them, but, like, I would really love them to take a stab at, like, the Assassin's Creed formula, right? Like, just mm-hmm. really uh, do something with I would a t- Nintendo I would put franchise. Kid, I would actually put Kid Icarus in, like, Assassin's Creed. Yeah, style. yeah, no, I... I that was my thought too, uh, like kind of, but I, I think they're really doing that with gods and monsters almost. Like, I really feel like that that's like a mythology based open world. I, mm-hmm. I mean, I, it's, I really think it's going to be like Assassin's Creed, like cartoon Assassin's Creed pretty much is what I'm like really thinking of that. But you know, it's, uh, we'll see. I, I really hope gods and monsters is good. I know it's supposed to come to switch, but mm-hmm. if they're delaying it for it to be a launch title on Series X and PS5, like... Is that the rumor? Yeah. I mean, I don't know how big of a rumor it is, but they did say it's going to be... Uh, cr- I think they said it's going to be cross-gen. Oh. Because so. I'm like, we haven't really like seen any gameplay, and they didn't have got given no release date for I it. No, so it was supposed to be out in February, and now it's like... It, it's it's like fiscal year 2021 so which means like or I, I don't know something like that fiscal year 2020 which means it could come out in March 21 March 2021 mm-hmm. so I mean we'll see but I I really hope Gods and Monsters is good uh, I would like to see Playtonic do a Mario game uh, oh actually I'd rather no, see them Play-Tonic do a Donkey do... Kong game no, I would, well, yeah, but I would actually like to see Playtonic do a follow up to Princess uh, Peach. What the? Oh, the Super Princess Peach of the DS. Game? Yeah. Yes. Or, or they do a Wario World game. <gasps> and like you could be like Wario and Waluigi, and you have to switch between them to solve different platforming style puzzles. Just saying. Could happen. I broke Ed, guys. He's frozen now. I yes! Can't, I can't really tell if he's frozen or not, but he's... he's there. Yes! So. Yeah. Yes! I know. Give that to me. Give that to me. Like, like, Platonic got the skill to do it. Oh. Like, and... Of course, they could still do that beautiful artwork that's in the Warrior World games, but if they want to use their own artwork, of course. Mm-hmm. I mean, the the, the mini games got to be wacky, but like, even if they don't, even if they don't do it like that, 
if they mix in some 2D platforming and mini games. Well, I mean, I think what it could be is like, you know, what you could do is like have like a Wario Land style 2D platforming mm-hmm. level, and then at the end of each world, you go through and compete in these micro games. And depending on how well you do in the micro games, you get gold to upgrade Wario and do certain things. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, not it's not going to be like a full on RPG or anything, but you could, yes, like you can buy like a butt stomp move, right? Or mm-hmm. you know what I mean, and really make it that way. Or you can like even gamble away your your moves for better moves, right? Yes. Like I think they could do some really interesting mechanics with that too. Uh, just because Which... Wario sucks, and you could like really go into the last few levels without <laughs> having any moves because you gambled them all away, uh-huh. <laughs> and like Which really I... break the game that way. Which um, Nintendo Treasure? Can I get my Star Fox game? Like two D vertical, if y'all want to, horizontal. I don't care. Make a make a arcade Star Fox game that is super old school, but that still have that goofiness yet hard to learn but enticing gameplay that you know how to do treasure like i would love to see that or shoot heck make, make give fox mccloud a jet and make a space harrier style game like oh, y'all gosh. did with uh uh sin of punishment like like can you really think about that like and, oh dude send it a sin and punishment like i don't know I, that needs to collect that needs support right there. Well, I Sin, feel like Sin punishment one and two that needs support to switch now. I that feel needs like you could happen. do something really cool with Sin and Punishment besides an on rail shooter, though. Yeah, I mean, like, I, I know that's what people like about it, but like, I feel like that if you're gonna bring back a franchise and make it cool, Sin mm-hmm. and Punishment is a cool title for a franchise, right? And you could do something really cool with that. Um, yes. I mean, honestly, I feel like it, it could, it would be like a, uh, I don't it know. It just didn't get the love and exposure. And I, that's why I feel like that needs to be ported over. And they, if they want to do a new one, of course, heck yeah, do what anything y'all want to do. And then, yeah, have bonus characters like Star, uh, like Fox McCloud or, or Skippy or whatever the frog or whatever their names are. Nobody cares about those characters. Go ahead and say it. Awesome. Nobody cares about them. We care about them. We just don't remember their names at this time. And I'm here for that Star Fox artwork by the God of War art director. Oh my oh, gosh, so- dude. I would love to see Gary would have write a Star Fox animated movie. Like uh, That's like all I want now. Yes. So. And he got... He literally got mad love from people. Everybody was just like, we will buy this right now. It's he because, did. like... I mean, like he wrote everybody's favorite new star Wars movie. Like book of Eli is a really good movie. Like he's just a good writer, you know, I don't know. I just, I feel like Gary Wood is a good writer and I feel like he could do something interesting. Yeah. So yeah, well, we'll see, but, uh, that's gonna, that's gonna do it for the show. Ed, it's gonna, I think we're done. I think we did it. Um, yes. Unless there's anything else you want to talk about, which I don't think, I don't think we need to talk about anything else for, really, because I know we still have a retro game show to stream here. Uh, yeah. Which uh, I don't know how long that's going to be, but uh, we'll we'll talk about it. We'll play it by ear. Yeah. So uh, I want to thank everybody for watching Nintendo Power Block. Remember, you can find it every Saturday on your podcast service of choice. Although, uh, if we're going to record on Tuesdays. I kind of like recording on Tuesdays better than Thursdays. Mm-hmm. We might we might move the show to come out earlier in the week. Um, we'll see. We'll play it by ear. Uh, I kind of want to move it to Thursdays, to be uh, honest with you. Uh, but we'll we'll figure it out. But uh, yeah, if you're joining us on Twitch and Mixer, thank you for watching. Uh, you can watch us live every week or you can wait till it comes out on podcast feeds and youtube.com slash Bosch Rush Games on Saturdays at 7 a.m. Eastern time. Uh, remember to rate and review us on your podcast service of choice. It really helps with discoverability. Uh, rate us on Apple Podcasts and Spotify specifically. Uh, that helps us the most uh, according to uh, analytics, apparently. So, uh what else? I'm 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 kind of just 
running out of steam here, to be honest with you. Uh, you can find all of our content on BossRushGames.com. Follow us on Twitter at Boss underscore Rush underscore Games. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Boss Rush Games. And join our Facebook community. Also, we have an Xbox community you can join and a Destiny clan you can join. Just search for Boss Rush Games. And, uh, yeah, give us a follow on Mixer and Twitch. Ed, where can we find you? You guys can find me on Twitter at that retrico, and you can check out Optional Opinion, SoundCloud, iTunes, and other podcast apps. Um, you can check out Hit 'Em Hard, um, coming soon, and other shows like One V One V One, um, Standard Definition, Boss Rush Podcast, Pod and Play, and more at our YouTube pet channel at Boss Rush Games. Um, and you can also check me out on World One One Podcast. We'll be coming back soon to do some recording. Uh, give you guys fresh new episodes. So um, if you care to look for that in the future, you can. You can find that on uh, podbean.com at World One One. Um, but yeah, that's where I am at. Oh, um, also, you guys could check me on Twitch or pretty much now Mixer at the Lyrical One. Um, for that and if you guys want to join me on switch games or playstation and xbox uh you could check out my uh twitch uh not switch page you could check out check out my twitter page and my information is there nice uh you can follow me at corian hg 713 on twitter and corian hg on instagram and mixer you can also find me on the boss rush podcast as well and uh, a few other things. Uh, there's a couple things I've been working on. Uh, I really hope you guys go check out the the website. Uh, it's very. Uh, I revamped it a little bit, cleaned it up. Really, hopefully, it's a good user experience on uh, on your end. So, uh, I I'm I'm loving the new thumbnails and the new graphics and the new logos for stuff. Uh, like I like I was telling Ed, man, this this week has been a lot of work, but I I hope it shows. I hope you guys are enjoying our content, and uh, yeah, I, all forty one episodes of Pot and Play are now on the website. Uh, if you were if you heard clicking, that's what I was doing. Um, it's I I just man, I love seeing all this stuff finally come together in one spot and really be available to you guys in one place, and it's uh. I don't know. I'm just, I'm really proud of the team and I'm really proud of everybody for, for all this, uh, content and all this fun stuff that we are doing here on boss rush games. So if you feel free to subscribe, uh, at bossrushgamescom slash subscribe. And, uh, yeah, I think that's it. I want to thank everybody so much for watching and until next time, we love you. Bye everybody. Woohoo.